And we are back. Pokemon Sapphire, Hardcore Nuzlocke. We're only going to be using ground type Pokemon. We also have Shinies on just to give ourselves a little extra flair there. So we're going to start with Citrus the Mudkip, who's going to get the ground typing upon evolution into that Marsh Tom. And really the only other first encounter is going to be that Ninkata before the first gym. So let's dive right in. So we run over to Route 116, drop back with the Pokeball and secure the Ninkata. All right, time for Roxanne. Given the fact that Ninkata or Ninkata cannot solo her at all, we're just going to go ahead and use Citrus here, even though he has not acquired that ground typing first. We're just going to have to fudge the rules a little bit for this first gym. We take down the Geodude, no problem here. Drop the accuracy on the nose pass as the Rock Tomb comes down. Thankfully, no critical, but the speed drop is here. We, we are still faster, though, with the Stab Water Gun. It is super effective. Nose pass goes for the hard end, trying to stay alive for a little bit longer as another Water Gun comes down, does massive damage, getting nose pass into the orange or the yellow the rock tomb is here another good one to dodge with the critical the potion from roxanne not wanting to lose her duckling as we drop back with a fadeaway critical water gun citrus pops off and we get that first gym badge and then for our granite cave first encounter it is going to be the geodude here with the rock ground typing drop back with another pokeball and secure it and now with our team of three, we head into the second gym against Brawly and his fighting type Pokemon here. We've got our starter Citrus out in the front lines with a stab Mudshot doing massive damage to the Mudshot. He drops back with a bulk up, getting that defense and attack up. But we come in with another Mudshot and take down Brawly's first Pokemon. That leads us to the second and last Pokemon since this is Sapphire here. Makita comes down level 18, takes the Mudshot not very well, but drops back with an arm thrust going for the five roll. Maybe some crits really trying to change the way the battle is going. And he does get the five roll. No no Chris, thankfully, and we hold on at right at half HP. Drop back with one more mud shot and take down Brawly. That is two gym badges. And on our way to the third gym against Watson, we get a rival fight against May here. She does have the Grow Vile, which hits all of our Pokemon except for Ninkata for super effective. So we got to watch out for that as we drop back with a mud shot against the Whalemer. Almost one shot the water gun comes down, does decent damage to Citrus, and we two shot the whale. And that leads us to the Grow Vile here coming out. May's ace. Right here, level 20 versus level 20 showdown. We're going to pivot into the Ninkata who can hit neutral damage on that absorb. It is pretty weak, but against a little bug, what can we do? 10 damage off the top here. We're going to have to go in for that. Lee Seed, the pursuit comes down, and it gets a critical hit on Chesto. I don't know if we're going to be able to win this fight now since it's going to be 1v1. Maybe if we get a critical, but the Orenberry is here for a reprieve. We jump to 34 HP. Another pursuit comes down, and we definitely can't swap out with that. Get a nice Leech Life on top, and maybe we can potentially three-shot the Grovile here. We drop out. We're going to have to live this pursuit. Drops to 18 HP another leech life comes in and the grove Isle holds on with about one or two hp another leech life is here the azor comes down first no critical and it leaves us at nine hp we barely hold on chester drops back with one more leech leech <laughs> one more leech life and we take down the grove Isle. that means we got one more pokemon we're gonna have to deal with here and may throws out the numal which has access to ember so we're gonna get out of there with the ninkata and what do we have here we're gonna have to tank the ember on the swap no problem there no burn which is really nice and we just drop back with a four times super effective stab water gun and it does connect may is defeated that was a pretty close one that leads us to our fight against watson for that third gym badge he's got his electric types here and with a ground starter in the marsh tomp we are gonna have a really good time all of those electric types cannot affect any of our pokemon so watson is really pushed against the wall as we one shot his magnemite citrus doing work here the second pokemon comes down and it is going to be the voltorb looking awesome with that shiny the sonic boom does good damage off the top but it is no problem as we drop back with a mud shot and it one shots the pokeball that only leaves the final pokemon here and it's going to be the ace magneton comes out flexes the shiny but with a four times super effective mud shot on top of stab, Watson has no chance. And that is three gym badges. We are doing fantastic. And then for our Route 112 first encounter, it is going to be the Numo, the chubby little camel here. And now we are up to four Pokemon on the team. And then for our Route 113 first encounter, it's going to be the Sand Shrew. Drop back with a Pokeball and secure it. That leads us to our fight against Team Aqua Leader Archie here. He's on top of the mountainside, and the Mighty Enoch comes down with the Intimidate. We shuck out Ross here, our chubby little camel. We do have access to that Staff Flamethrower from the Game Corner, which is really nice. The Sand, sand Attack comes down. We do lose our accuracy, but we drop back with another Flamethrower, and the Mighty Ena is deleted. One down, two to go. Archie then sends out his Gold Bat, looking pretty formidable at this point in the game. We tank the Stab Wing Attack, no problem. Though the Flamethrower comes down. Can it be a two-shot? And no, it cannot get about 40% off of the Gold Bat. We drop out another flamethrower and the sand attack paying dividends as we miss. And now we're going to have to pivot into potentially one of our other Pokemon. We're going to go straight for the Graveler. Cherry comes down. The wing attack comes in and not much damage off the top, which is exactly what you want to see as we sidestep the supersonic. We drop back with a staff super effective rock there and it takes down the Golbat. 
that only leaves one Pokemon on Archie's side, and it's going to be his Ace Sharpedo, which is also a very scary Pokemon. I don't think it has any Water-type moves, but if it does, we are absolutely in trouble. Sharpedo comes down with a Stab Crunch, and that is so much damage at level 25. My gosh, the focus energy for those bonus crits, so we really need to land this much shot, and we do. It gets, gets the speed debuff as well. And Encore Leader does not want to lose his, I was going to say, doesn't want to lose his Super Potion, doesn't want to lose his Sharpedo, uses his Super Potion, Archie uses another Super Potion as the Mud Shots continue to come down from our side, Citrus popping off once again, the speed drops and we should be able to outspeed and we fade away with a baby Mud Slap, let's go. That leads us to our fourth gym badge fight right here against Flannery and her fire type Pokemon. She opens up with a tiny little slugma here. We drop back with a stab water gun and it cannot one shot. We really should have leaned into the mud shot for that extra damage. But slugma gets a sunny day off, which is kind of scary given the fact that Torkoal is waiting in the back. But we get rid of the slugma and Flannery sends out another slugma here. A very cool shiny, not a very strong Pokemon, but we really need to pivot to a mud shot to make sure we one shot this little fella. But also that means Torkoal will be in the sun and that overheat's going to do so much damage as we get a fadeaway critical on top. Citrus gets the level 29 there. Hopefully that helps in the fight against Flannery's ace here. The sunlight is strong and Torkoal is ready to go. We lean into the mud shot. The speed debuff is not going to work given Torkoal's passive. As the body slam comes down, we do dodge the paralysis, which is absolutely massive here. We drop back with another mud shot, leaving Torkoal in the red. Absolutely. Another body slam comes down. No crit, no paralysis, and the sunlight is gone. However, Flannery goes for the hyper potion on her ace here. The mud shot comes comes in 40% damage, maybe 35 off the top. And now we are flirting with criticals. I'm pretty sure we are dead to a crit body slam. So we really don't need to risk our potential swamper in the future. We go ahead and pivot into the graveler here who resists the body slam as well as the overheat with the rock typing. We dodge the paralysis once again. We drop back with a magnitude seven. Going to be doing massive damage, but is it enough to take another Torkoal? And it is not. He holds on, drops back with another body slam. No paralysis though. Flannery using her final hyper potion on Torkoal. This is a slug fest. We drop back with another magnitude seven doing really good damage getting Torkoal to about 40% HP but a magnitude 5 comes down and that can't kill the tortoise as the body slam comes in only 8 HP we dodge the paralysis and we fade with a magnitude 10 the earthquakes and cherry <laughs> receives the gym badge let's go it is now time to take on Norman, the fifth gym leader here. Our father with his three of the normal type Pokemon. The Slaking comes down, leans into that faint attack. It is special attack damage, and it bypasses our beautiful brick wall of a defense. We respond with magnitude 10 coming off of that critical hit. We are definitely dead to another crit faint attack, so we are risking it here. We get a pathetic magnitude 6 on that follow-up there, and it leaves Slaking in the red, leading to a hyper potion. We drop back with a magnitude 8 here. They're going to do a lot more damage, and it brings Slaking to about a third, but the low round turn comes down we get back to seven and slacking gets crit all the way to about one hp but the yawn comes down so we do have an opening here with the magnitude seven and we do finish off the first slacking however cherry is on the timer here as we will fall asleep on this following turn the big bad slaking comes down the ace level 31 comes in with a focus punch here charging up that first turn we go for the rock smash potentially trying to drop that defense on the big fella himself cherry falls asleep now we are going to swap out on that loaf around turn and our best option is probably the sand slash given that really nice physical defense so the graveler is hurting it's asleep it's half hp but we get petcha in there our nice shiny sand slash the charge up comes down we break the focus with the slash though the signature move here we drop back with a poison sting hoping for the poison to get that damage adding up each and every turn as another focus punch comes down we have to keep breaking that focus or we are in trouble as norman's trying to play around that loaf round turn we get a nice slash in there on top of the poison and if we can break through here we go the focus pops the slash comes down is the poison enough though and it is beautiful stuff the ace drops and now we only have one pokemon left to deal with in the vigoroth one of my favorite normal type pokemon drops back with the facade we answer with the slash and we are going back and forth here the slash and the facade toe to toe and then vigoroth comes in with a slash of his own bringing Petch at about 35 HP. We get an Ornberry 4 Reprieve, bringing us a 45, but we don't need to risk this. We can swap into a healthy Pokemon. Hopefully no critical hit on the swap. The Vigoroth does get the Hyper Potion from Norman though, coming all the way back to full HP. We have the Ice Beam. We have the Mud Shot. We lean into that physical damage with the ground typing there. It is stab. We get the speed debuff as well. And now we are faster. We get another Mud Shot in there. That 5% mischance could be everything. The facade comes down. It doesn't crit, thankfully. And we drop back with one more Mud Shot. Citrus for the win, absolutely. Five gym badges down, and we beat our father.
And now it's time to double back all the way to Meteor Falls with the good rod and secure ourselves a bar boat here. We want to get that Wizcash in there. So we basically have two water ground types, which can be really strong for the rest of this run. Secure it and add the six member to the team. And that leads us to another May fight here after the Weather Institute where you beat Team Aqua. May's got her Grovile with a Stab Leaf Blade, which is very scary here. So we got to be a little bit careful, but we go in against the Numa. We have the camera up who does not resist the Leaf Blade, but takes it for neutral damage. So if anyone can deal with it, that it would be Ross the camera up. However, the Whalemur has Water Pulse in the rain, and <laughs> everyone is weak to that except for the Mudkip, or should I say Marsh Tomp and Whizcash. So, um, and if we have them out when Grovile comes down, it'll just be a barrage of Leaf Blades and everyone will die. So really, I find myself in a terrible position here, not setting up on that first Pokemon in the Numel, I really should have done something. And I'm just staring at the team going, oh my God, we're all going to die because of my negligence. So I think we're just going to have to roll a magnitude and hopefully we one shot the Whalmer. And if that's the case, we're fine. We can tank one Leaf Blade and take out the Grovile with a Flamethrower. And um, other than that, though, if we don't one shot the Whalmer and then the Whalmer uses Water Pulse in the rain, we lose camera up. And then we potentially lose everyone else between the Whalmer and the Grovile. So all or nothing, drop back, and it's a magnitude six. And I think we know what that means. Here it is. Our biggest fear comes through. And Rost is absolutely drowned in the rain. We send out Chesto, who is a little bit super effective to the water. But if we <laughs> snipe with it, this is over. It's over. How do you take such a good run and toss it down the drain? I'll tell you. I'll show you right here firsthand. Chesto goes down and these berries are gone. These berry nicknames are over. And I mean, we can go into the water ground, but as you're about to see, it doesn't matter. Three out of four of these Pokemon are, are four times weak to grass. And this is just an absolute disaster. Citrus drops back. I mean, if we survive with one HP, maybe, maybe there's a chance. Um, but I think this is over. May sends out her ace, the Grovile. Flexing the shiny on as the leaf blade comes down. Doesn't have a missed chance. On top of that, it has a high crit chance and Citrus is gone. Our starter is dead. And uh, I mean, we can send out Orin as well. A little, <laughs> a little offering to the new world here. Wizcash, we just got you, buddy. And I'm sorry we get outsped. The leaf blade comes down. It is four times super effective as well as Stab. And Grovile doesn't even need a critical hit. Cherry is here, but why not go into Petcha the Sand Slash? Let's do this. So Sand Slash is actually only two times weak to grass, so we actually might be able to live this. Petcha, hold on. 22 HP. 22 HP and a Dream Slash comes down. We needed a critical hit to win there, but uh, maybe we can take this one, and I'm just kidding. We cannot a uh, fade away crit, and May is having her way with us and our team. That is so much red. Why not one more? We're going to offer up Cherry the Graveler and Grovile. I hope you're hungry, and I hope you have room for dessert because cherry is going down cherry is absolutely going down we wipe to may in the first attempt and this is an absolute tragedy as far as this video goes thank you so much for your time i really do appreciate it and i will catch you on the flip peace